Samsung eventually goes to silicon carbon batteries, but you are left behind. Christmas has passed, but that's certainly not the Christmas gift everyone has been hoping for. Samsung is now developing silicon carbon batteries, just not for you. According to an official blog post, Samsung SDI has partnered with Korean manufacturer KG Mobility to create next-generation battery packs for electric vehicles focused on advanced cylindrical cells. The batteries feature Samsung SDI's 46 series cells with high-capacity NC, a cathodes and silicon carbon anodes. The silicon carbon technology lowers swelling and extends longevity, while a table's design optimizes power output and rapid charging. Enhanced thermal management and manufacturing techniques also make these batteries safer and more reliable, aiming to give longer driving ranges and higher performance for future electric vehicle. While that's fine and all, Samsung is still reluctant to equip the next S26 series, for example, with silicon carbon batteries, which are the talk of the town these days. Sad. Silicon carbon batteries are viewed as a substantial increase over the typical lithium-ion batteries used in most smartphones today. While traditional batteries use graphite to store energy, these newer models mix in silicon, which can hold up to 10 times more power than graphite alone. This allows manufacturers to put significantly greater battery capacities, for example, 8,000 milliamps instead of 5,000 milliamps, inside phones that stay thin and light. The biggest benefit for users is a substantial gain in battery life without the brick-like weight of older high-capacity phones. Beyond sheer capacity, silicon carbon batteries also support far faster charging speeds and operate significantly better in freezing temperatures, which generally consumes regular batteries rapidly. Online, some have voiced their wishes for Samsung to embrace silicon carbon cells, but current leaks imply the S26 Ultra will remain with the same 5000 mA capacity utilized for the last six years. The S26 Ultra is expected to attempt a longer battery life by adopting the M14 OLED technology for its panel. While the M14 panel has generated excitement, leaks suggest it won't deliver a major visual boost compared with devices like the iQOO's 15, which fully exploit the panel's brightness, color range, and high-frequency dimming. Reports indicate that Samsung is prioritizing power economy above peak display performance. To preserve battery life with its 5000 mA cell, the S26 Ultra may limit the panel to 8-bit color depth, cap brightness at 2600 nits, and use low-frequency PWM. So maybe 2027 is the year Samsung will try silicon carbon batteries for Galaxy phones. Maybe. Next, the S26 Ultra is pronounced dough by thousands already. Reports say we should expect a flop. Samsung's S26 Ultra faces considerable consumer. The flagship's launch reportedly switches to February 2026, marking a change from Samsung's usual January release trend. Multiple leakers, including Ice Universe and Korean publication, Yonhap News Agency, say Samsung will have its Galaxy Unpacked event in San Francisco on February 25, 2026. Sales are scheduled to begin in March, roughly a month later than the Galaxy S25's January 22 launch earlier this year. The S26 Ultra specifications purportedly include a 6.9-inch Quad HD Plus AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. Power comes from Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 CPU combined with up to 16 gigs RAM and 1 terabyte storage. Some territories may receive Samsung's Exynos 2600 CPU instead, according to Android headlines. Camera hardware exhibits little modification from the S25 Ultra. The quad camera configuration keeps a 200 megapixels primary sensor, a 50 megapixels ultra wide lens, a 12 megapixels 3x telephoto, and a 50 megapixels 5x periscope telephoto. Indian pricing leaks say the S26 Ultra will cost around $1,600 equivalent. The device has been shown in Bureau of Indian Standard Certification listings, signaling imminent regulatory approval. The US price is rumored to start at $1,300, matching previous Ultra models. The delayed launch allows rivals such as OnePlus, which previously launched the OnePlus 15 earlier this year, greater market exposure. 
Samsung's timeline shift reportedly originates from Exynos 2600 development issues and strategic repositioning closer to Mobile World Congress 2026, as explained by Fandroid. Samsung is apparently preparing to unveil a new OLED display technology for the S26 Ultra next year, which depends on AI to help protect users' privacy. It will feature the Flex Magic Pixel technology developed by Samsung Display. The display maker has already exhibited this technology at Mobile World Congress and at the K Display 2025 event this year. Local media sources from Korea highlight that Samsung Display's Flex Magic Pixel technology is undergoing full scale mass production. This raises the likelihood of it being used for the Galaxy S26 Ultra and potentially even for the 2026 foldable phones. This display technology employs AI to control individual OLED panels to alter viewing angles. For example, if you launch a bank app on your Galaxy S26 Ultra that includes important information, the AI will alter the pixels automatically to restrict viewing angles so that someone peeking over your shoulder can't see that information. Samsung is anticipated to debut the S26 series sometime early next year. The portfolio is believed to comprise the S26, Galaxy S26 Plus, and the S26 Ultra, and the costliest of the three features direct satellite access for emergency scenarios. However, it is only accessible in one geographical variant. The China Compulsory Certification has given its authorization to the S26 Ultra for the local market, and accompanying documents have disclosed that the Chinese model of the firm includes direct satellite communication. It possibly allows you to send messages or your location to concerned local emergency agencies during emergency scenarios when there is no cellular network nearby. It isn't obvious if emergency phoning is supported. The S26 Ultra just acquired the Federal Communications Commission certification in the USA, indicating that both US and global varieties of the phone employ the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 processor. The S26 and the Galaxy S26 Plus could be powered by the 2 nanometer Exynos 2600 chipset in several areas, including South Korea. Galaxy Club backs up this information but adds that it isn't just the S26 Ultra's battery that could be familiar. According to the rumor, the S26 Ultra will likely include a 200 megapixels main camera again, but it's unsure if it will be a new sensor. As such, it is possible that the S26 Ultra could include the same main camera as the Galaxy S25 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. Why is this so worrying? This report, and to be fair, it is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt underlines a significant concern I have about the latest smartphones getting enhancements based on software alone. Here's the thing. While Samsung phones remain some of the greatest phones on the market, the hardware advancements have stalled over recent generations. This has led to a concentration on software and AI enhancements as selling features for the latest phones. Now, if these reports prove out to be real, then we may conclude that the same will be true with the S26 series. The problem is that Samsung has arguably made this a much harder sell because of how expertly it deployed Galaxy AI into all its products. Currently, you can use the bulk of Galaxy AI capabilities on last year's Galaxy S24 series, the Z Fold 6 and Galaxy Z Flip 6, and the current S25 series. But Samsung has extended several capabilities, such as Circle to Search, to older devices like the Galaxy S21. Now, it is likely that Samsung will include special AI capabilities for the S26, but you'll still have access to the majority of Galaxy AI on previous models, which ends up undercutting the S26 appeal rather a lot. This causes me to fear that Samsung is becoming too reliant on its AI to carry its newest phones. In my situation, I focus on hardware when I look at a new phone because it will remain constant for as long as I use the phone. Software, meanwhile, will evolve and update, making it a lot tougher to determine its value. If the older and newer versions have the same hardware, the rationale to buy becomes more focused on how many software upgrades you'll get, which is nowhere near as enticing an offer. With all being said, it is still very early days since we don't expect the S26 Ultra until early 2026 at least. There's a lot that we still don't know and a lot that can change before the actual announcement. Hopefully, the Galaxy S26 series will feature more than just token upgrades when it debuts, 
but only time and further rumors will tell. Now my question to you is, would these small modifications be enough to have you move to a newer Galaxy S phone, or do you want far more impressive hardware changes before making a purchase? So that's all we know for now. We'll be sure to keep you updated as soon as we have more information. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.